Hi, my name is Frank Clitock and I'm here to introduce to you a week spent at Paradise in Portugal, which is where we run birding in Portugal. And birding in Portugal is run from my little eco lodge set in the heart of the Portuguese countryside here. And it's uh, right down in the middle of nowhere, close to Faro Airport. It's a tiny little 10 bedroom eco lodge set in the middle of nowhere. It has a view to absolutely die for. There's uh, plenty of space inside, but we spend most of our time outside, quite honestly. Beds are comfortable and big, and rooms are airy and clean and cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And the bathrooms are spacious. That's not to put a food for too fine a point to it. Lots of outdoor activities, canoes and SUPs come included in your stay and we've also got a sauna that's included in your stay and my wife Daniela gives fantastic shiatsu massages as well and we've also got a yoga shala and that comes included in your stay as well. The food is brilliant and the wine list is extensive. Foods International Home Cooking and uh, we've been given TripAdvisor's Certificate of Excellence eight years running which puts us into their Hall of Fame actually and we're also uh, a green leader for TripAdvisor due to our ethos of conservation and sustainability. The Kinter itself is set in a, a tangle of hills in the lower Alentejo. Cork oaks and uh, madronia trees. And uh, the, the, the cork oaks is, if you're lucky to come in the, in the summer when they're taking the cork off the trees, you'll have a real treat. It's a very skillful job takes uh, two year apprentices. Each tree is numbered with the year that it's meant to be cut. And uh, the, the trick is to get as much cork off in one go as you can and not to kill the tree. So it's, uh, you mustn't cut the flying there underneath the bark. And so the trees carry on living for about 250, 300 years. Every 10 years or so the cork is taken off. The neighbouring countryside, there's a tangle of wooded hills and small, low intensity agriculture interspersed with some lakes dotted around here and there. And you have here the soil bunting. Yeah, we can find that in the garden. And also we can find uh, melodious warblers in the garden. We have a very beautiful song. And in the garden as well, we also have common nightingales. And of course, everyone knows their song. Nesting around the place are barn swallows and red rump swallows as well. And uh, sometimes the nests of the barn swallows and red rump swallows are taken over by winter wrens. And we have serins in the garden as well. And Sardinian warblers, of course, very common here. And in roundabouts, we have lots of hoopos. And sometimes you get opportunities to see this kind of activity. Beautiful bird, iconic for this area. And we have um, various hides dotted around the place and one in the garden for uh, golden orioles. And in July, we quite often have about 10 of them out in the open at once. There are three pairs nesting. Down in the river valley, we've got hide for kingfishers, common kingfisher, and water rail. It's brilliant. The Kinter itself is set in Lower Alentejo and we have four distinct areas which we go to. The Algarve salt pans in the southeast, Foyer and Cabo Vents southwest, Costa Vincentina northwest, and the plains of the Alentejo northeast. Starting off with the uh, Algarve salt pans, most of our guests fly into fire and we can pick them up from, from the airport and they're birding within 
10 minutes of getting off the plane, really. Eurasian Spoonbill, Greater Flamingo, one of the blessed places in the world to see little bitterns. You can get very close to those here. Lovely species. Scape cage bird, black headed weaver. Here's one building a nest and red crested pochard. And of course, for this area, the iconic purple swamp hen. To the southwest of us, we have Foyer and Cabo San Vicente. Foyer, the large highest mountain, and you're quite often here early in the morning birding above the clouds and you get rock bunting and blue rock thrush and of course woodlark and uh, European bee eater and down near the coast you get little bustard and quite often Montague's harriers and on the rocky cliffs you have white storks nesting and they nest very very close to peregrine falcons and you can see these and you can actually look down on the nest of these. In the same cliffs you'll have red-billed chuff. To the northwest of us we have the Costa Vicentina and here we quite often start the day off at the Lagoa Sant'Andre which is a beautiful large lagoon set just inland from the coast, sandy area, these extensive reed beds And here we have a very good chance of seeing black winged kite. And it's the best place around to see Savvy's warbler. And there are literally hundreds of yellow wagtails there. On the way back down the coast, quite often we come across these extensive fields of wildflowers. And there are enough to take anyone's breath away. People just stand and stare. And in the cork oak forest on the way back, we quite often find a common red star. This is the most southerly point that they actually nest. And then to the northeast of us is the Pièce de Résistance, the plains of the Alentejo, which stretch as far as the eye can see, gently undulating steps where you have lots of very shy species, but they're easy to see here. Things like great bustard. And if you're lucky enough, very rare, you will see them fighting. It's a, uh, quite often the battle to the death here. A large heavy bird, one of the heaviest in the world, weighing anything from 16 to, I think the heaviest was about 22 kilos. There are about 900 pairs in Portugal. And they're actually quite easy to see if you know where to look. So it always pays to have a guide. Other birds that you can see around this area, things like black-bellied sand grouse. And this is how you'll normally see them flying away. If you're lucky, they'll come over you. But if you've got a guide and he's good, you can quite often find them on the ground too. Beautiful. And just as beautiful, is the Eurasian ro European roller and a very site specific bird, the Rufus bush robin. All of these birds are quite shy, none more so really than the stone curlew. And if you're lucky, you can find Tecla lark. And everywhere in this area, you will come across storks, white storks. They nest seemingly on every telegraph pole. There's literally thousands of them. And from time to time you'll come across a little lake and on these lakes you'll find a uh, little ring plover and one of my favourite species, collared prat and coal. Just look at that. Just stunning bird. And uh, obviously black wing stilt as well. And you can quite often see Eurasian black vulture and the Spanish imperial eagle. This one's a juvenile. And anyway, that's my little area of Portugal. I look forward to seeing you down here. That's a week here. 
Uh, most people come for a week or two weeks. Sometimes they come for two weeks so that they can go out once with me and then uh, they can go out on their own later on. And of course, being photographers, we take lots of photographs when we're going out, when we're taking people out, and we'll give those photographs to you afterwards. So even if you're not a photographer, you'll have a record of the kind of species you've seen with us. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you down here. Beautiful place, as you can see. Lovely. Ciao.